Ungefragt. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta. This is Anna. And this is Lesa. And this is You've, you've got, got Five, five options. options. Marta. Marta. You've got five <laughs> options. <laughs> Marta, what was that? Are you deserting? No, I'm not deserting you, but I am not following the crowd. I'm doing what my heart tells me to do. Like we said in the last yes. episode, <laughs> you should not be doing things because of peer pressure or society pressure. So sorry, guys, I am taking responsibility for my life. Lovely. <laughs> I don't even know what to respond to that. I that was a nice illustration. I, I, uh, yes, I think it's just way. a poor <laughs> team spirit, to be honest, as I am the poor listener, apparently, of our own podcast. But hello, everyone. And we are back with episode two of challenge that was sent to us by Simon, Simon. which we we gave him name Simon. We don't know what is your real name, Simon. I hope you are tuned in. And I think Marta will read the challenge again just to remind you guys. If you would like to listen to the part one, please either visit our YouTube channel. You just have to put you've got five options in a search window and then you will get our channel and you can subscribe to it and it's for free. I cannot stress it more. And you can find all of our radio episodes over there or you can also subscribe to our podcast and and we also have all of our episodes there. And we are available everywhere, like uh, in uh, iTunes and like everywhere. We are everywhere. We are everywhere, right? Apart from Google Play. Yeah, but that's because apparently in Denmark, uh, you cannot use Google Play for uploading podcasts. It's, it shows something about country regulations we tried many oh, times. I didn't know that. Yes, me, I, I know that. That's a sad news for, for Google Play. Yes, not for us. Their it's, loss. It, yes, it's their loss, not ours. So, Marta, would you please read the challenge? And I, before read the challenge, I will say, dear Simon, have you seen how the peers uh, have tried to manipulate me by telling me that I just have poor team spirit? But no, I have an awesome team spirit, but I still want to stay true to myself. So a good learning here for you, Simon. You can always decide for yourself and not let the society manipulate you. This okay. became very political. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. You made your point. Okay, so here comes the challenge. I am a student living and studying abroad. I really love to travel and I have an opportunity to go for a student's exchange, but I have a good job and other responsibilities. I feel like it is an internal battle between my adventurous spirit and rational thinking. Previously, when I felt like doing something, I was just doing it. Now I am holding myself back and trying to make rational choices. I don't know if I should ensure financial and career stability now and travel later or if now is the time to see the world and take care of the stability later. I am really trying to figure out how to find the balance between the logical thinking and the spirit of adventure. I guess my question here really is, what should you live by, stability or adventure? Yes, so that was the challenge description. And in our first episode, we have discussed, we have actually asked Simon a question because we don't have options today as such. We have five questions or exercises for Simon to do uh, so he can actually get his own answer because we think this is a very individual uh, answer that everyone would, would have for this uh, specific dilemma. So uh, we discussed about what does uh, stability means for Simon. We have some hint he is talking about financial or, uh, or uh, career wise but we would really like him to make this inner journey and think about stability and what does responsibility means and also what does rational thinking mean, means for him and where did he maybe not suddenly but 
in this period of his life got an idea that he should now become stable, responsible and think rationally. So those were the topics we discussed and we had a fantastic discussion in a studio. So guys, you have to revisit the first episode. And today we will be uh, talking about other exercises for Simon. And exercise number two is what does an adventure mean to you? And why do you think it's important? Question number three, what is your default regret? Question number four, what are you afraid of? And question number five, which is a homework, is uh, what are the projects or jobs that are combining both stability and adventure? This is a bit of a research that we would recommend you to do afterwards. So maybe it will also um, open your horizon for different options that you never thought about. So guys, now I would like to talk about an adventure because Simon says he has an adventurous spirit. And for him, as I understood from the challenge description that Marta just read, it's something like when I was feeling like doing something in the past, I was just doing it. And Simon is actually defining this as an adventurous spirit. Do you think that's the case? Because for me, that sounds a little bit more like spontaneity, but I'm not sure. Actually, wh what is an adventurous spirit in your opinion, guys? I think it's a sense of uh, discovery, I feel like, you know, seeing new perspectives on life, different cultures, meeting other people. Um, yeah. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a very good definition. Where, where spon spontaneity? I can't say it. How do you yeah. say it? Super English. Spontaneity. Spontaneity. Marta? Yes. Spontaneity. No, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, 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 I feel like that's more like the sense of, you know, just doing something. Being if you feel like doing it. Yeah, yeah just right? following your impulse. Just do it. And maybe adventure that they're not the same, I quite feel like. Yeah, yeah. I also fe feel the same because when I think about uh, being spontaneous, mm -hmm. that's the least controversial pronunciation I can come up with. Mm -hmm. Being spontaneous, that actually is being impulsive. So making decisions just on a go and doing something following, I don't know, your gut, heart or desire. Yeah. And that could be opposed to rational thinking when you have to rethink or make your decisions based on a reason or logic. And that is not necessarily uh, the same. I think the spontaneity, it's not the same as an adventure because mm -hmm. you said it very well. It's uh, it's a sense or a desire of a discovery, right? Yeah, uh, that's how I think I would define it. I yeah. would define it the same, actually. What do you think, Marta? I asked Google and Google says that Google. it's an unusual and exciting or daring experience. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what adventure is. So, but of course, as always, everyone has to do the definition for themselves. And I think spontaneity, it's always uh, something that we can connect with being adventure, adventurous, right? Or of course, you can have a planned adventure where you go out, make a great plan for making a great adventure as a, I don't know, road trip in South America. That can be an adventure for you. Or you can spontaneously pack your backpack and go on that adventure in South America. So it's, yeah, this is slightly different concept, so to speak. But being adventurous and having a big need of stability is something that is very close to my heart because I actually have both. And this is conflicting values, you can say, because on one hand, I get bored easily. So I really seek adventures. I love traveling and I want to experience new things and unusual uh, daring adventures. Maybe I'm not uh, too high on this one, meaning I don't necessarily need to like jump out of the airplane with a parachute, which Yet. some people would uh, have as an adventure. I have more, I have disconnected more to uh, getting to know new cultures and so on. But uh, I also have a great need to have stability in my life, uh, some financial security and so on. So for me, you can definitely connect both. You can try to seek situations or solutions where you connect both. Okay. And how successful are you in connecting both? How, how would you say? Is it a really big dilemma what to do or um, difficult to combine adventure and stability? In your I would experience? say that more than having more than one kid. Yes, it is rather difficult with one kid. I could go travel taking. I don't know. I didn't have much uh, money and I could travel with four planes to 
Dominican Republic with one kid and so on. With three, I must say, it is uh, more difficult, I would say, with the difficulty level grows with the amount of kids. But you can. It all depends uh, on you and how you choose to live your life. And you always decide yourself if something is difficult for you or no. Or yeah. if something is difficult, it's, is it a showstopper? Because the, the fact that something is difficult doesn't mean that it's not worth it. Because it might be difficult to travel, for example, with, uh, with several kids. But once I am there, I am so happy. That, that I, I did it. Yeah. yeah. So it. sometimes actually having a bit of a difficulty makes you appreciate things more. So I actually don't think that if something is difficult, it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know, guys, I was actually thinking about adventure and adventurous spirit. By the way, thank you uh, a lot. And I will pull you in, a, in, in, in this question in a moment. Because I remember back in the day, I have seen once on Facebook a funny quote, which was, make sure that you have a friend or a partner that even going to a supermarket is an adventure. <laughs> and actually, some people perceive me as that kind of person. Marta, am I that kind of person? Please tell me, confirm something. I'm sorry, but now I just have this picture of from the movie Bad Moms, yeah. how they went to the supermarket. That's exactly like a real adventure. If you guys want to know how going to a supermarket as an adventure looks like, you have to see the Bad Moms. Yeah, uh, definitely. But I, I love that quote. I totally love that quote because I think adventure or being adventurous is a state of mind and I was also seeing another quote on Facebook some time ago and I remember it was something uh, I think it was they say Buddha said it but you know it's like it could be anyone you who know knows. it's yeah. who knows who said it like at least one day time a year make sure that you are traveling to a new place you know to to widen your horizons or whatsoever mm. right it wasn't Buddha it was Buddha it was very old <laughs> no, it wasn't Buddha guys okay <laughs> Jesus who was that Dalai Lama <laughs> They're, they're similar, right? Google time. <laughs> Google time. Doesn't matter. It's a plain quote and I just look like a total ignorant in case. Uh, okay. They were both bold in my defense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ring, ring. Uh, yes. I have some friends with Good. whom recording a podcast or a radio show is, is an, an adventure. adventure. Yes, uh, that's uh, that's. We are all on one big adventure. Uh, regardless of who said that, I remember looking at this quote and I remember comments, you know, comment mm. thread on Facebook like, yeah, you need to travel. It's like so important. Your life has no meaning. It's also those quotes like I prefer to have stamps in my passport than uh, things in my house, blah, blah, blah. Sure. I think traveling is fantastic. But I think people also make a very big shortcut. Oh, sweet Lord. I, I think I hit the microphone. People are making a very big shortcut. And it's maybe coming from some unwillingness to put yourself in a mindset. They think I will go on adventure means I have to travel somewhere exotic and experience some stuff. So it will more like create the adventure for me. When in reality, I thought I can take a bus to a neighborhood in my home city that I have never seen. I have no idea about the streets. I don't know what it is. I can just walk around, go to bodega, cafe, mm -hmm. start to talk with people that I never seen. And that's an adventure. It's almost like being in a different country. But I think that we have this in our head because it looks exciting, you know, and now in social media, when you post those pictures from different countries, and yes, I have adventurous life and I do so many things, you know, and sometimes I'm thinking how many of those people who are going on some adventures or doing adventures adventurous things are really focusing on the experience or just on documenting the experience. But that's just a question, you know, like in general now in this world with social media. But I think it really is a state of mind. You can make an adventure from a bus trip to a next neighborhood. You can make an adventure from going to a shop. I once had an idea that I will take my friend as a birthday present. She loves weddings and she loves wedding dresses. I thought we can pretend and oh my God, I hope that no salon in a uh, or who's spirit right now but we thought that we can pretend she's getting married and I'm her maid of honor and we will go to a shop in Orhus and she can measure you know try on the dresses because that's her dream to try on the dresses that's a freaking adventure because you know we take on different personalities and we pretend if it would be I, I did we didn't do it finally but I still have it you know in my bucket list or whatever and that's an adventure and you don't have to you know leave the country you don't have to do a lot of uh, weird expensive 
fancy things to, to get there. You just have to have the state of mind. What do you think, guys? I think that every city has, a, almost every city has a neighborhood that if you ha even have a like a necessity for like high risk taking, you can always go there in the night and get <laughs> some <laughs> real adventure. Yeah, sure. So definitely, no matter which level you, you know, if you have a low need of risk in your adventurous time or if you have a high need, you can select the neighborhood uh, by that. I didn't necessarily meant that kind of adventures, but yes, point taken, Marta. If you are looking for more like, yeah, uh, I want to go gangster adventure then probably yes but you know uh, I, I really think it's a state of mind I really think that we are just trying sometimes to find something exciting and adventurous by you know going through those standard things like I will travel I will backpack or whatever forgetting that adventure is a state of mind it's a way of living you know am, am I totally off because Lasse you are no 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 I'm just listening um but I think you're right about it being a, a state of mind, um, being, I don't know, um, open for mm -hmm. the people around you, the your environment, and, and maybe trying new things or talking to different people that are around you that you wouldn't have talked to before. So if we talk about adventure being a sense of discovery or something, that's also kind of a, a kind of discovery, you know, or trying something new at the place you live. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go travel, you know. I think it's about having the, the ability to, like, look at your surrounding with open eyes and trying to go a different route or something, you know. Mm -hmm. It could be little things, you know. Um, I totally yeah. agree. And I think that every single human being has this ability. I think just in many cases, this ability is sleeping and we have to uh, really go uh, through some yeah inner work to awaken it. Mm -hmm. But uh, many times I go somewhere uh, like to Ikea and I just go in and I think adventure. It's like I even say that to myself in my head, you know, or I go to Legoland with Marta. By the way, you should see us in Legoland. I think we are even uh, louder and more excited than our own kids and we have been there Marta how many times have you been to Legoland <laughs> well I've been here for close to 10 years and I have several times had like a season ca card and going there every you know week or something many many <laughs> many, many times and we are excited every single time we just go like adventure let's go here let's go there and it's 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 the same place but we get ourselves into that state of mind and we are excited and we are happy and sometimes even our kids looks at us and they are like okay I isn't that a bit too much for you? <laughs> but it doesn't matter because it's in a head. You know, someone can yeah. go to Legoland. <clears throat> I'm here for the 20th time. Jesus, blase. You know, <laughs> it's like, how can I be here again and again? It really is how you look at it. Uh, so um, that's why I think adventure is, a, yeah, it's a state of mind. Marta, you, you agree with me. I agree. Amen. Fist bump. Everyone will have a slightly different definition. I agree. For me, having an adventure is doing something unusual, doing something out of ordinary. And of course, traveling can bring that to you easier. But if you always uh, look for your sense of adventure in traveling, then when you repeat the same experience over and over again, it might stop being adventurous. <laughs> it might uh, start being a, no a normal thing. So of course it is, you can make an adventure of uh, anything. It is about doing something unusual. So yes, you can have an adventure anywhere and everywhere. Yes. Yeah, so that's why Simon, this time we would like you to think about your adventurous spirit. What does it mean that you have an adventurous spirit? spirit for you how would you like to cultivate your adventurous spirit in your life because one thing we also discussed at the very beginning classes said very good point you know spontaneity and adventure and Marta actually confirmed is not necessarily the same thing and you have mentioned you know that I was just doing it so that necess not necessarily needs to be an adventure so what does it mean that you want an adventure in your life and define that because maybe it's not connected with traveling maybe mm. it's the same sense of discovery which you could generate being here and that is an important information for you when you will compare it to the sense of stability that you have described for yourself in option one because we talked a lot about stability and inner emotional stability but if in this point of time for some reason financial and career stability are very important for you and that's your angle then Try to think about, you know, your need for adventure and can it be satisfied while you are securing that 
financial stability. That's why I want you to think about it a little bit more than black and white, you know, either it's this or that. It can be stability or working on financial stability and having a sense of adventure. But that's something that you have to do for yourself by answering those questions and, and seeing what the results are. Does it sound good, guys? It's definitely something to, to think about in general. So, Simon, now when you hopefully have, um, you know, dis discover for yourself what what actually is the dilemma you are having, what does stability means to you, sense of adventure, and you made some inner work, because this is what we always want our wonderful listeners to do. We actually have another question, which is, what is your default regret? I didn't know how to call it better out of I did I was not really creative on this one but I uh, was thinking about something like I think most of us have if we have a regret in our life many times not always it's something that is reoccurring so it's something that you know we do from time to time and then we think I could have been more I could mm -hmm. have been more courageous I could have been more assertive I could have been more spontaneous I could have been more uh, responsible, I could have been more proactive, whatever that is. I think every single one of us have something like this. And if not, then well, uh, congratulations to those aliens who don't. But for instance, I have mine, and I am ready to share it to the world. But I usually if I have a regret, it's I could have been more responsible with money. That's usually my occurring regret because I in the past I had some challenges with uh, managing my finances. I'm very free spirit in spending. So that usually is my recurring regret. Um, and usually then I was thinking about other regrets, but that's an example from my side. Guys, do you feel like sharing your default? Re do you have a default regret? Am I or am I just shooting in the dark? Well, or maybe uh, something from a past. It doesn't have to be a current one. Lester, do you have one to share? I don't know if I have one that it's so like general, like or like specific. I think mine is just about being more open and honest towards myself and mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. Because I've been, you know, very, I have, uh, you know, dealt with uh, low self-confidence and that has really been restraining on me, you know, in some ways. So I often thought, oh, I wish I just told them what I really felt. Or um, So I think that's been a regret that I've struggled with a long time. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that, you know, deep uh, regret that doesn't allow you to sleep at night, right? No, I, no, I I'm mean, sorry, this was like very serious. No, no, <laughs> but uh, but actually this is this is a good example. It's yeah. it's something that you usually wish, I wish, maybe it's not a regret as such, but something I wish I was more or I wish I was, mm. and you know, in my case, this was repeating, you know, not yeah. repeating okay. every day, but in certain situations, I have noticed that this is what was repeating in my head. And in your case, it well, was... Well, and then I guess uh, spontane <laughs> spontaneity, I can't say it. This is a word. Being spontaneous. Being, Being spontaneous, spontaneous is something I wish I was more sometimes, you know? So that's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to be a little more spontaneous now. Okay, so... So th that's like been a regret sometimes when I look back at my life. Oh, I wish that I just followed through on something in the moment, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, yeah. so that's that's yours. Marta, yeah. what about you? You know, I, w I really had to think hard. So uh, luckily I've had a few minutes to reflect on it. I uh, am really surprised to find myself not to having many regrets, which is really cool. But I did find some Something because everyone has something it can be just stronger or uh, weaker mm -hmm. but I did find for myself a regret of uh, I regret being so fearful or I regret that the fear uh, drives my life or something like that so I definitely found something related to fear and another thing that I have noticed recently I catch myself regretting is not being able to really be and enjoying the moment. So I often have plans going on in my head and thinking what I have to do next mm. and thinking about the future. Now it's cool because I'm not, at, le at least I'm not based in the past because in the past I was actually regretting a lot of things and living, reliving things from the past a lot. I have managed to work with that, but I am still quite future based and thinking about what I will be doing. So my regret actually, th the one for now is not being in the moment. That's, that's one that I, uh, you know, I, I'm like, oh man, I wish I could just disconnect and just be here and now and enjoy here and now. Mm -hmm. Guys, uh, I have a question for you 
real because I uh, note myself down two aspects or, or things that those regrets can tell us about ourselves and be helpful with decision making, especially if we have to choose between two things like, you know, balance or adventure or something. It depends what your regret is, actually. Um, but what does reg- what did this regret in any way helped you or motivated you to do something with yourself? Did Was it a trigger to some inner change? What do you think? Because I was thinking in my... Okay, I will give my example because apparently I'm not really being very clear here. Sorry, guys, for that. So, for instance, uh, you know, each time I'm think, thinking about, you know, my uh, responsibility towards money, it's like I, I really, you know, there was a long period of time when I was ignoring it because I was like, you know, money always come and go and I don't have to take care of that and so on. Now, when we are trying with Marta to, uh, you know, go with... You've got five options... On a, on a different level, I will need some uh, funding sooner or later, you know, to start. And then I'm thinking, you know, okay, I can see it now. I, I had this, let's say, challenge because it comes to me. I see it in the past. I see it now. And now I actually am finally like facing it and like, okay, this tells something about me and I want to change it. So it's it's for me that regret tells me that this is actually part of me. I want to change, not the part of me that I, I want to change because someone tells me that regret, if it's occurring and occurring, and I say all the time, I wish I would do it differently. Well, suddenly, yeah, I fucking have to do it differently. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I see that recurring regret, if if there is one, as sooner or later uh, a trigger for change, at least this is how I hope so it is, and uh, an area that you know uh, to work on. And the second thing that I was thinking, that might be our true self, not necessarily in my case, but I was thinking about your example, the spontaneity, Mm. being spontaneous, I meant. When you have this regret or the wish, I wish I was more spontaneous, then I think, and I would like you to tell me what's your opinion, that you might have been suppressing a part of yourself, the the true part of yourself all this time. Do you think this makes any sense? Yes, yes, of course. And I really like what you said about, you know, regret kind of being, um, that's, that's a very clear sign of you need to change something in your life. If you had this recurring feeling of regret, then that's a really clear sign that, okay, there's something I actually need to change. Mm-hmm. Then I need to do it. Otherwise, it will never go away, you know? So so actually coming to that, being able to reflect on it in a way that regret is a sign of change needing to happen. That I think is correct. Mm-hmm. Because now I'm thinking, Simon, if you would write down, and I would like you to focus on these two things that you have mentioned in your challenge, being more responsible or more stable or being adventurous, think about the general regret you would have just I don't know in the future I wish I was more responsible or I wish I was more adventurous if you would skip on this opportunity or you would go for it try to imagine yourself and you know also go back to all the like recurring regrets you have Mm -hmm. because maybe you actually do have something with I need to be more responsible I wish I was more responsible I wish I was more stable maybe there is something in it you know and maybe that's why you feel now the pressure to actually become more stable and responsible, but it doesn't necessarily have to be connected with the financial stability. Maybe it's something in you that you need to do. I don't know if this makes any sense for you guys. No, no, that makes very good sense, I think. Yeah. Okay. But guys, I think that we will make three episodes out of this because we still have two exercises for Simon and uh, we have to finish for today. So thank you very much. Thank you, my dear co-hosts. Are you still here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Bye bye, guys. And we will hear each other next episode. Bye. Bye. You are listening to You've Got Five Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, thefiveoptions.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks. Du lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz.